that you're really happy to have all this on camera. What's up, everyone? It's a new year, and you know what that means. We're in the future. And today, we're gonna talk about the future of gaming and NFTs. Oh, oh, oh boy, the blockchain and what to think about it. All this right now on Roby Tech. Now, NFTs in gaming isn't something that's exactly new. Toward the end of 2021, companies like Ubisoft and EA voiced their support for a future of games that leverages NFTs in their titles along with blockchain games being in the cards for their futures. They were met with quite a lot of skepticism, criticism, and pretty much just outright anger. Now we'll get into some more details here in a bit, but more recently, like January 1st, Yusuke Matsuda, the president of Square Enix, posted a New Year's letter to the Square Enix holiday page. A lot of people have done a line-by-line -line breakdown of the entire blog post, so we won't be spending time on all of that, but there are four main sections and takeaways from this. Square Enix is going to explore the use of NFTs in their games, creating blockchain games, creating more powerful AI and leveraging more cloud-based technology. While the latter of the two of the four sections are simple and straightforward, with cloud gaming becoming a much larger presence, thanks to things like Steam's Remote Play and Project X Cloud from Xbox, these all make it possible to play games from your phones with a controller connected wherever you are. For advancing AI, the way they describe it makes sense with games getting bigger. They want their world building to be more intricate and simulations to be more realistic. All of this is accomplished by making a more robust AI than what they currently have available to them, and hopefully making it profitable so they can do things like license it to other creators. Imagine a Final Fantasy game where the NPCs feel more lifelike and real rather than having everything feel scripted with each playthrough being identical to the next. We wouldn't be bound to systems like yield branching dialogue trees of yore like we got in Mass Effect and Dragon Age, not to mention how immensely complicated and of course expensive things like that cost developers, just given the massive amount of assets and code trees you have to work with. So these would be welcome changes to the future. But now for the digital elephant in the room. Let's start with blockchain games. These are games that only exist in the blockchain, not on a Steam server, Battle.net, Epic Game Store, or anywhere centralized. In fact, Steam has banned blockchain games from their store. Most of these have a model similar to freemium titles, where you can either play the base game for free or with a small upfront cost in whatever form of cryptocurrency the developer uses. And then you can unlock customization, items, content, and more by spending more crypto. This is basically the same as free-to-play games with pay-to-play or microtransactions, except rather than dollars, it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or Dogecoin. But in addition to the games themselves, they also sell NFTs or non-fungible tokens. If you've been hiding under a digital rock that hopefully you've purchased and only you have, an NFT is basically a digital thing that only exists on the blockchain and whoever purchases it owns it outright and can do whatever they want with it, whenever and for however much cryptocurrency they're willing to part with it. This has been anything from music to digital art, to skins, to models, to equipment, to characters, and so much more. It is limitless to what can be sold as an NFT in these games. Now the main draw to most of these is that you own it forever. How many times have you played a game like Call of Duty or Battlefield and bought into their cash shop only to have the game end of life? and everything you bought essentially just disappear, never to be seen or played with again. Pretty much anyone that's played an online shooter or any game with a cash shop that ended up shutting down. Could be you soon, New World. I'm <laughs> Just kidding. The idea behind this is that those NFT items will be yours forever and have a monetary value associated with it. If it's something that people wanted, then it can be transferred to any other blockchain game. The reality of that though, it's impossible the way games are made currently, unless there was a unified engine that all blockchain games use that was designed to allow items to be transferred freely. It's not possible to say, use a cloak from an RPG in a game like Fortnite, or even the music from one game being played in another. With how interwoven everything is for a single title with scripted events, music, assets, arts, design, and physics, they would all have to be brand new games built on the same engine using the same kind of assets for that work to require every item in blockchain games to be adapted for each and every title. And that means a watered down game experience, most likely, and everything feeling homogenized and one game being so like the next. I mean, even in the anime Sword Art Online, where the main 
main character transfers from one game to the next. Nothing in their inventory carried over, but their stats and currency since there was an apples to apples equivalent. And you thought that there wouldn't be an anime reference in this video. <laughs> For shame. Now, aside from just the sheer difficulty in making any of this work, it's still a platform that is driven by cryptocurrency and mining those currencies. As PC gamers, we've got a bit of a sore spot for anything crypto related since mining has made it nearly impossible to get vital PC components for high-end gaming at reasonable prices, much less even MSRP. How bad would it feel to not be able to play the blockchain game that you want to play because you need a new GPU that you can't get to mine crypto to be able to play the game you can't play to get the NFT you can't get because crypto miners bought up all the GPUs. For most people, it feels a bit icky. Now Square Enix very well may be able to do some interesting things in the blockchain game space and NFTs, but there's some real concerns still surrounding all of that. Firstly, it's not much different than games with heavy handed and predatory microtransactions. Just look at any game review for titles that actually have them. Nobody but the publisher is a fan of microtransactions in their game. Full stop. Sure, in a free-to-play title, it lowers the barrier of entry for just being able to play the game. But no one wants to pay thousands of dollars to unlock everything in a game so they can play the character they want and look the way they want. Now granted, there are some microtransactions that haven't been as egregious where you can pay a small amount a few times to get what you want and you're good till something else comes out for you to care enough about to buy it. Another issue is how overblown and inflated the value of seemingly worthless NFTs have gotten. Even Square Enix said that it's an issue where the value of goods on the blockchain need to become more standardized and more realistic. You know, like the real actual money. But that's the whole point of crypto and blockchain. It's what made it work for everyone that likes it. How the value of any cryptocurrency can fluctuate drastically from literally one second to the next, depending on a tweet from a certain eccentric billionaire. And aside from all of that, there's the environmental impact that NFTs and crypto have had on the world itself with farms and mining drawing more power than an entire country in a short period of time. Imagine an NFT that people bid on with mine currency in the next half of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game where eco-extremists combat an evil money-hungry corporation literally sucking the planet's resources and lifeblood dry to make money. It's a bit ironic when you really think about it. But let's look at the other side of this, shall we? As much as anyone may dislike it, Crypto isn't going anywhere for the foreseeable future. The fact that it is so volatile means that no one government can regulate it or stabilize it. It's literally at the ebb and flow of the internet's whims. That's a big appeal to a lot of people. It's also something that can grow exponentially with seemingly very little upfront cost and investment from one person if you're set up for it and keep at it long enough. See, there's the thrill of a small amount of money turning into a giant pile of cash that is so appealing to, well, pretty much anyone. In a day where you can buy a song off iTunes, but don't really own that music, just the right to play it, there's something to be said to having something that is truly yours in the sense that it exists on the internet and it's your property to do with what you will. That's not to say that there aren't issues with people stealing art and selling it as NFTs, and some really dumb stuff has been sold for the equivalent of tens of thousands of dollars. And if it's a picture, as soon as it's posted anywhere on the internet, in any capacity, anyone can screenshot it, record it, and do whatever they want with it. Because how does copyright law and theft apply to the blockchain? That's the question. Now right now, you can screenshot and record pretty much anything on a PC. Game consoles all have a screenshot tool, and you can broadcast and capture anything that happens in a game, so your expensive piece of art that you have proudly displayed in your game can end up somewhere in like a matter of seconds. So at the end of the day, there is a lot of heat on companies like Square Enix, Ubisoft, and EA announcing that their futures lie in blockchain games and NFTs. A lot of it is fair criticism. With all of this appearing like money grubbing and trying to expand profitability and not much mention of exactly how they would implement this or what benefit there is to us, the consumers. There's just this overall sense of, I think it's new and cool and I think it can make us a lot of money that has left a sour taste in the mouth of their fans and their communities. But if we take a step back, what could happen if large companies like these throw their hats into the ring? Would we see the Wild West that is cryptocurrency slowly get reined in? Or would it be an impossible, absolute mess of a cash grab? So that's it for this video. What do you think? What do you think about NFTs and games? Would you ever be interested in playing a blockchain game or have you played a blockchain game already? Do you think that a company like Square Enix could have a positive impact on the metaverse? 
Or is this a CEO thinking this is a fun new way to make a bunch of cash? Let us know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video or go live right here on Robitech. Have questions about NFTs or any other tech-related questions? Then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas about these very subjects. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robitechdeals.com or at robitechdeals on Twitter, where we have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech, from PC components to video games to televisions. Finally, you can also follow me and my team on all of our other socials at Robitech everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video. I'm super looking forward to what discussion happens in the comments below, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.